Good morning, Coach. Um, you played pretty well at Texas Tech. Uh, does that help this your young team with maybe some confidence going into this game? Um, I, I hope so. We showed we showed two different sections of the game yesterday to our guys, uh, where you know we had pretty good runs. We were up seventeen to ten uh, early, and actually had a layup, a tip in, and a Nigel had a wide open three. Um, you know, we could have pushed it into the twenties, and and then we had a uh, another. Then they took the lead. They had their run, and then and then we came back and took the lead uh, again before half. And then they had a good finish to the half, which gave them the lead. They stretched it out into double digits, but again we cut it. Uh, Surrey had the layup, and uh, you know we had the unfortunate couple little technical technical fouls, some learning lessons. Um, you know, in that one stretch where we made the run, you take those free throws away and you're probably in a, you know, a five point game that we lost two times. We lost guys on out of bounds plays and, um, you know, those were five points. So, uh, you know, I, I hope it does. Um, our guys did a great job of kind of reading their defense, making the extra pass, kind of playing off of their principles. Um, you know, we'll see if we can do it again. I, I, there's, there's no doubt though that, um, just like the Kansas game that you, we get to those gut check parts of games and we have to have some toughness. Uh, we have to, you know, the, the box out, box out, second chance points, Texas tech got us on a couple, obviously Kansas did the other, and those are backbreakers, you know, and then teams get, get a couple of those easy ones, uh, or get to the free throw line. And then, you know, they hit a three. Now you have a, you know, seven run, seven Oh run. And then it, we just don't have, uh, the uh, experience, the go-to guys that uh, can get us back in the game, you know, constantly like that. So it's, I think toughness, the rebounding is going to be, and playing strong against them uh, is going to be a big key. You mentioned it briefly there, but were there some particular things you guys did better in that game than maybe you've done in other games, or was it just a situation of you made some shots and it well, I think built a some confidence? had a really good first half on that's before night that was the last game before Nigel missed four so we were starting to get in a little bit of a I I, I, I hope a little bit of a groove a continuity some rhythm um, you know and then obviously losing Nigel you know and we had some other situation you know other guys out injuries things like that we you know kind of lost our uh, that rhythm again and you, you hope uh, you know, you hope now, and again, we don't have days one, but um, you hope we can get a little continuity. I, I think they, you know, we passed the ball well. We made a few shots. Um, you know, every every team's different. That's the, the really unique part of our conference. Um, everyone has a different style and, and defends differently. And, um, you know, so you part of your – dilemma as a young team uh that you have to you have to learn that you just can't play the same way every time you have to adjust to what they give you and make the most of it and and you know that game in particular we were pretty good now can you know hope we can do it tomorrow night again do you have an update on Dejuan and maybe a timetable uh you know i i think it's just it's going to be more you know i i think now it's uh where he he ran in the pool yesterday. He still had some pain. Um, you know, he's still using the cr crutches to, um, you know, give him some support. Uh, you know, he's going to need a good two or three good days. Uh, you know, I'm hoping by next Monday, maybe you get him back on the court. And again, I'm, I'm just stretching that out to be honest. Uh, I, I guess that's my hope and, and, and dream for him. Um, and I, you know, again, we got to, we're not going to force the issue. He, you know, he's got to get that foot healthy. We don't want him to, you know, be a long, uh, prolonged injury because we force him to get back. And one final thing, uh, Nigel Pack <clears throat> has the big game and then he goes to KU and he faces one of the best defenders in college basketball. Uh, how did he handle that? And how good of an experience is that for him to see that kind of defense? Well, it's, it's, it's funny, and I mentioned this to Wyatt last night on the radio. I, I, you know, Davion came up to me after the game because our, our first three possessions, um, we just, you know, we didn't execute. We didn't, you know, we, you know, we didn't, guys weren't in the right spots. And, you know, and I like, you know, and we talked about it, you know, at halftime, we talked about it after the game, and Davion just came up to me and said, Coach, I'm sorry. 
I, I was nervous, I, you know, that I, I just, I didn't do what I was supposed to, you know, and I, I, you know, he's a, he's a good young man. He's got big heart. And I talked to Nigel the next day and I, I said, I thought you looked a little worn out, tired. And, and, and he said, coach, they, and we had told them they're going to lock you down. You had the big game, you, you know, they're going to make other people, they're going to scout you. They're going to make other people make plays. We actually put a couple counters in where maybe he would screen and, and maybe we get a couple of easy ones, which we didn't execute, but, um, and then it's it surprising. I said, you know, I just kind of kept talking to me and he said, coach, it probably was the, uh, you know, second game where I was really nervous the first game of the year. And then this one, and, and I, I just kind of, it hit me and, and we talked about it. I talked to Shane about it and, you know, it's a big game. It's it, obviously to play Kansas for the rivalry. Uh, I, you know, I just told our guys it was a great opportunity for us to do something that guy, you know, hasn't been done in a long time there um, and win. And, and I didn't want, I wasn't doing that for pressure. I was doing that for more opportunity, but I think they, the, the little bit of nervousness and they locked in on him, but even Stan and I looked at the number, uh, I'm sorry, why didn't I look at the numbers last night? And he's still two for five from three, four, I think four for 10, you know, he had four turnovers and that that's what was, um, you know, not not what he does, and I think they got him out. They got him in out of rhythm a little bit. Um, he forced action a little bit, and again, it's a. I just told him, you got to be under control. You again, you got to take what the defense gives you. He he missed Davion for a couple dunks because they they just said we're going to blitz him, and uh, you know, again, he just I think he just got a little out of rhythm, and hopefully, a learning thing, and he'll be better the the next time. Or one more thing. Um, you mentioned Nigel kind of locked in on and still did a pretty good job despite the turnovers. Uh, you've got some young guys that do things maybe outside of their skill set or things that other than they should be doing. Uh, and Mike tends to force it because I think he feels the pressure to do something. But Nigel and maybe Davion seem to have a pretty good grip on what they can and can't do and how important is that for other guys to learn that? Uh, it's it's huge. Um, you know, part of uh, having good teams is understanding your roles um, and executing your roles and doing what you do. Now, you know, we, um, you know, it's a it's that fine line with uh, uh, you know players that you know you don't want to like take away their game and ruin their uh, you know like their excitement and spirit for the game. But at the same time, they got to accept what they are. And, and when you get teams that understand their roles, understand what they can do, uh, obviously it helps. Uh, there's no doubt. And, uh, I, you know, it's just, you know, that again, it's, it's part of the learning process. Uh, a guy like Selton, uh, things we told him, I told him last year when I was watching him and we recruited him and, and talked with him, I told him into the summer. And, but they had, he had the experience that, you know, hey, I, I can do these things, but I got to add this to my game. Now he knows, you know, you just, the problem is right now you can't, you just, just can't add those things and you got to accept what you are and do those things. And, you know, even Selton, I'm, I'm, you know, he the other night, six rebounds and we've been on him about rebounding and, you know, just again, there's things you can do. You don't always have to score. You don't always have to try to make plays. You can let those come um, and let the game happen. Uh, and if you can do those, it, it's it's going to help them and it's going to help us. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bruce, we've tried asking Mike a few times now how he's holding up during the season. He almost seems annoyed that we're even going there. But fr from your point of view, how has he stayed so positive um, as a senior leader when things aren't going right uh, on the court? Well, I think I think deep down it's, it, you know, he it's – it's hurting him, uh, you know, and, and I think that's why he's had a little bit of uh, the last few, you know, I don't, shouldn't say the last few, obviously the last game he, he had some fumbles and stuff and, uh, you know, I, I, he wants to do well and, and he keeps, you know, we try to help him. We try to be positive with him. Uh, I just saw him. He was in, you know, he was in here shooting this morning after testing. Uh, you know, he, he wants to be successful and, um, so he, I'm sure deep down it's, it's hurting, but, uh, he also knows he has to, uh, step up and, and help us and be successful. I think what, 
Tim just asked, you know, just, uh, and we've tried to even convey to him, let, let it come. You don't always have to force it. Be, be poised, be on pace, uh, you know, let the, let the game come to you. And, and, and then, and then you're, you're a much better player. Uh, obviously it helps with Nigel in there for him. Uh, if we could just, you know, get somebody else to, he could play off of it. Obviously it would help, uh, it would help him and ease the pressure. It, has he done a good job setting an example, being a, a veteran leader in practice though? Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, like I said, he was here this morning at shooting, and uh, he's always one of the first ones here. He leave, one of the last ones to leave, uh, you know. And he's told you guys, he, you know, I he's not a vocal guy. Uh, Rodney Magruder wasn't a vocal guy until the other night, I guess. Uh, but <laughs> uh, you know, he, you you can lead in different ways, um, and and we just we just need you know from him consistency, and really from all the guys. If, if we're going to do anything here down the stretch, uh, we got to get some continuity and we got to get some consistency from people that we know what they're going to get. And then when we get the gut check parts of the game, uh, we got to do the little toughness things that, that make a difference. All right. Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate you sliding over. Also, so we can see Dean and Dean and Rodney today mm -hmm. in the background. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. Yep. Uh, next question to Arnie Green. Sorry, uh, back back to Mike. He's when we talked to him. He's also talked about keeping things in perspective during this losing streak. He talks a lot about being blessed to be able to even play. Is that something that you like having him convey? To, to the rest of the team, or would you rather have him be, I guess, a little more assertive? And Well, I think he's obviously trying to say the right things to you guys, uh, you know, and, and which is hopefully he's had some good training. Um, it's, it, you, you know, you say something to you guys, and then now you're going to take it, and then it's going to be spun a different way, and then social media is going to pick it up. And then he's going to look bad and we're going to look bad. So I think he's saying the right things. I, I know it means a lot to him. Uh, I would like him to be a little more vocal. Uh, I would like him to play a little better pace and, and let the game come to him. Uh, you know, it, and, and I hope he can, he can find some, some peace here down the stretch. And when he walked out this morning, when I saw him, I just said, uh, you can't tell with the mask. And, you know, I said, do you have a smile? And that's, I want him to have a smile. I want him to enjoy it. Uh, you know, it, it is. We, we've talked about it a lot. It is a, play, a privilege to play basketball at this level, to play for K-State. And, and I, think he, I think he deep down really appreciates that, which I hope people uh, appreciate that. He, he, he thinks it's, uh, it is a privilege and an honor to be here and be part of this. And, you know, one of our goals was to get through the season and, and play games and, and it, you know, it looks like we're going to, you know, right now, and again, Baylor just had another setback, um, you know, that, you know, part of his leadership is to make sure that we, we do that and the guys have the discipline and uh, on and off the court to make sure we're playing games. And uh, the results have not been what we want by no means, but we are, we are there and we're, you know, the guys are competing every day. That's all, that's all I can ask.